Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. and it is time for a follow up on our first GHS video. I've been trying to gather data for this video all week. This has been the story pretty much across the country on day four here of fall 2023. Luckily for us, we do have a new partner and sponsor of the channel and that's Telescope Live. So they're gonna be subbing in on the data for us. I had the opportunity to do a Zoom call with the guys out in Italy last week, and they are fantastic people. They're very enthusiastic about the hobby. And for me, when I know a company is enthusiastic about the industry they're in, I really like to work with them because I know they're gonna use that passion to really bring a great product to marketplace. And they're also gonna price it in a way that's accessible to everybody. And that's really what Telescope Live is all about, accessibility. You get the opportunity to use some of the best scopes in the world under the best skies in the world, like Chile, Spain, or Australia. So you can get Get targets that you can't even get no matter where you go if you're here in the United States or maybe over in Europe. Now, if I'm being honest, early on I was apprehensive about using Telescope Live. I had a lot of pride in using my own data and I still do to be fair. When times like this where you can't shoot or maybe there's even targets that you've always wanted to get like Eta Carina, the Large Magellanic Cloud, or the Statue of Liberty Nebula that you just can't get from your current location, I think it's an awesome alternative and a way to continue to advance your skills while others might be stuck sitting on a project for weeks and weeks. I did a video last week in a collaboration with Sasha from A View Into Space and he told me that he started a project in fall and couldn't finish it until January last year. And so in a situation like that, it's really nice to be able to continue to practice and hone your skills. Because after all, guys, we know that processing is really just as important as the data acquisition. Once you're to the point where you can acquire data at a pretty good level, it really comes down to processing. And so while other folks are waiting for the clouds to part, you can continue to practice and up your game on the part of this hobby that really takes the most skill if we're honest with ourselves. And guys, the best part is with the link in the promo code in the description, you're gonna get 50% off your first two months. So get in there, check it out. You'll be like a kid in a candy store, I promise. And with that, let's jump into the tutorial portion of this video. All right, guys, so we're back in the mini studio. Let's dive right into Picks in Sight. And here we go with the Blue Horse Nebula. And this is about six hours of telescope live data. And just so you know, I'm not cherry picking some really good stuff here. I did the same thing with M45 last week. And you can see this is only 2.9 hours of one shot color data from my backyard. So this is gonna work no matter what. And what I did in the past is I would start all the way from scratch with GHS. And so I have my data prepped here with an auto stretch. We've done an LRGB combination. We did dynamic background extraction blur exterminator, noise exterminator, here we are. So rather than starting from scratch with GHS, since this auto stretch is actually fairly harmless, nothing's blown out, nothing's clipped, it's a good starting point. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the screen transfer function, I'm gonna hit the little nuclear button here, I'm gonna drag this triangle in the corner over to the histogram transformation, which applied the stretch, and then just so you guys can see, I'm gonna undo the STF, I'm gonna drag the triangle over, and now it's permanently stretched. So it's a little bit of a cheat code, gives you a little bit of a head start, and so now we can dive into GHS, and we're right on the first quartile. Everything's looking pretty good. Now we just need to enhance it. What I'm gonna do is something that's a little bit different than last time. I was trying to find the symmetry point ahead of time, and I think that that still works, but I have found it faster to just kind of do what I'm gonna do here, and that's just give it a little stretch. So turn the preview on. I'm gonna go like 0.5, maybe around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and then I'm just gonna drag the symmetry point over to the right until I find the spot that I want. Now, I'm gonna leave it with a little bit less contrast on this first one, because the first one I really wanna bring out this faint dust that's all the way in the background, so you can see before, after. We've doubled the signal on one stretch. Like, we could stop here, we'd be good, but we'll keep going. Now, you can see there's not a lot of color in this, so I can keep stretching in RGB mode here, which is fine, but I'm actually going to stretch in the different colors, and the reason for that is I can push some color into it with the stretch this way and still achieve adding a little bit more contrast and brightness. So I switched to blue. It is the Blue Horse Nebula, after all. And so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna maybe go to like 0.4-ish and maybe about 0.5. And you're like, man, that's crazy. Watch as I drag the symmetry point slider to the right. Watch what the curve does. So as I drag it to the right, the curve actually goes to the left. 
and I take the data out of the mid-tones here and I kind of push it right into the nebula where I want. And if I go too far, it basically puts it out of the visible light and then we can't see it. So I think right about here, before, after, does a nice job giving us some blue hue. Now, another area where the dust seems to live based on the last few projects I've done is really in the green and the red. The green kind of gives us that faint color and then the red gives us that more rich brown color that we see like in the shark fin nebula and um, like the seahorse. So using those two, I'm gonna give it a little bit of green. I'm gonna go a little, probably less strong with that, maybe 0.3 and 0.5. And then same thing, drag that symmetry slider across. And then before, after, you can see it just, some of the faint nebula does a nice job enhancing that. I can probably leave the same settings and then just go from green to red. As you can see, it balances out, but then like look at right in here and here and here where it's thicker, you're seeing a little bit more depth in the color now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. It gives a little bit of contrast between the nebula and the dust itself. And then just to balance it out, cause it's almost looking a little bit magenta as the red mixes with the blue, I'm gonna do one more blue stretch. And as you can see, boom. And I haven't even touched it. I really just kind of left it. I will check the symmetry slider and see where do I really want it? Probably right about there. And I would say that's a good spot, guys. So um, we're not done yet, but uh, if we go ahead and compare that versus the STF, I don't know about you guys, but I personally would take the image on the left here. I think we've done a really nice job enhancing it. Nothing is blown out. We've kept the background at a really good spot. So if you look at the bottom, yeah, I might actually add a little bit of darkness to that just because I wanna show you guys the tool and it's a little bit brighter than I want. It's at like 0.2 to 0.25. I really like it to be between 0.15 and 0.20. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So as you hold this, you can see we're at like 0.22 you know, in the darker areas, maybe 0.20. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go from generalized hyperbolic down to linear, and then we have our black point. And then as you can see, as we go to the right, yep, we're kind of right on the edge to start to clip. So that gives us from 0.20 to like 0.18. So it got us a little bit darker, so before and after. So I'm gonna apply that. And that's if you guys want to just apply the stretch to the background, and then we still have a little bit to the left of the curve to work with. So there are kind of our two examples. Now, if you want to keep going with this, I would probably at this point take it into Photoshop. And just so you guys know, the next video I do for you guys, I promise, I've been talking about it for a while, is going to be a full Photoshop tutorial. But if you wanted, if you don't use that tool, you can go into curves here. We will go to curves transformation. And then I think, of course, we want to get a little bit more blue in there. Um, so we'll start with saturation. I'll do kind of a pull right up from the middle because I think most of it, well, actually, yeah, more of the color's kind of down at the bottom, so I can take that point and go there. And we want to make sure we keep it out of the background, so then I'll kind of pull there. So that gives us, if I do before, before and after, a little bit more blue. I'll go ahead and apply that. I will reset that, and we'll go with the blue here. We'll see where that is. So it's up here, and then again, we know the background is kind of in this region. So we'll pull that down before, after, a little bit more blue in there. And if you wanted a really nice natural look, um, you could go here. What I would do next, I would go ahead and add the stars back in using the screen star script or pixel math I have um, right here. Um, so I'd give those a quick stretch, add them back, and then take it into Photoshop. And I will show you the final overall image that I came up with. And um, like I said, I'll come out with a Photoshop video for you guys in the future. That way we can go from start to finish here. But um, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Um, I did post on Pixinsight for Beginners, my M45, and asked if you guys wanted me to make a follow-up GHS video. The answer was overwhelmingly yes. And so here you go. Thanks again to Telescope Live for being a part of the channel. I look forward um, to doing this. Please check it out. It is a great way to practice. Um, this data is phenomenal. It's a lot of fun to work with. And and um, until the next one, guys, uh, clear skies.